I peed my pants last week. Not full on peed my pants, like that one time at summer camp when I was 10 years old. We were playing capture the flag, and I couldn't hold it a second longer. I didn't want to admit that I just wet my pants, so I doused myself with a bottle of water. Imagine, if you will, that once all of my clothes were wet, no one most especially Christian Clark, my camp crush was the wiser. I was resourceful even then. Did others find it odd that I was suddenly soaking wet? Probably. But I'd rather be an oddball than a pants wetter any day of the week. As for last week, this wasn't that level of peeing my pants. This was just your regular I've pushed three babies out of my body dribbling. Giving birth to a baby is like a space shuttle launch. Everything gets destroyed on the way out, which means that sometimes, you guys, I pee my pants. If this knowledge hurts your tender sensibilities, then I'm going to assume you haven't had bladder control problems and I offer you my congratulations. However, if my experience makes sense to you, then you probably have this problem too which means you just laughed a little, having experienced a similar predicament. I was jumping with my boys out back, and somebody hollered for me too. Show off a Maderto touch. This is my only known skill on a trampoline, and if I'm going to work up the gumption to hoist myself onto that spring-loaded death trap, you'd better believe I'm going to give it my all. One second I was soaring through the air like one of the extra tiny gals they launch into basket tosses during a cheerleading competition, and the next moment my pants were wet. Nobody noticed unless you count my pride but it happened just the same. I had to keep jumping so that the continuous wind rush would dry out my shorts. I'm resourceful, remember? The timing was perfection, too, because not 30 minutes later, a previously programmed Facebook post went up showing me trying on dresses for the Oscars. Before you get the wrong impression, I am not fancy enough to go to the Academy Awards. I am, however, married to someone ultra hunky. He's not really fancy either, but his job certainly is. That means that sometimes I get to wear dresses like a princess and drink free wine in well lit ballrooms. In these instances, photos show up on Instagram or Facebook of us looking well quaffed and ultra glam, and the internet goes wild. This is prime real estate for people to write me notes about how glamorous my life is, how stylish and fashionable and perfect my world must be. And all I can think when I read those comments later is, I've just peed myself, in public, surrounded by other human beings. I've literally gone to the bathroom in the air while trying to force my hamstrings into unnatural gymnastic positions in order to impress my three-year-old. You all, I am about as unglamorous as you can get and I don't mean that in a celebrity, stars are just like us kind of way. This is not like that time Gwyneth went makeup free and, with her perfect skin and her angel blonde hair, tried to convince us she was just a regular gal even in her $400 t-shirt. No, I mean this literally. I am not glamorous. I am 1000% one of the nerdiest people you're likely to meet. If I've somehow managed to convince you otherwise because I are on a lifestyle website with pretty pictures, or because my hair looks extra shiny on Instagram sometimes, well, sister, let me set you straight. I am not a perfect wife, not a perfect mother, not a perfect friend or boss, and most definitely not a perfect Christian. Not. Even. Close. I'm not perfect at anything I do well, except for making and eating dishes that are primarily cheese based but the other stuff, the life stuff? Oh girl, I'm struggling. I feel like it's important to say that. Important enough to base an entire book around the idea, in fact, because I want to make sure you hear it.